is random words. One is the customer that they know you and just help them buy from you. So it's Patrick Wilson. What's up? Hello, everybody. This is Marketing Mondays number 88. 88. And the, nice. last, the last one of 2023. Even though I'm an avid uh, uh, Cleveland Browns fan and dislike everything about the Pittsburgh Steelers, when I hear the number 88, I can't think, I can't help but think of Lynn Swan, which, in my opinion, is one of the best wide receivers ever in NFL history. But uh, anyway. So that's what I always think of when the, the, the number 88 comes up. There you go. I was, I'd think of Michael Irvin, but that's my first indoctrination to football was really around the 90s and the Cowboys. So uh, thankfully, I'm not a Cowboys fan. Otherwise, I'd be getting grief from many, many people. So we'll yeah, you guys let me down this weekend. I needed you guys to beat the Bengals and you guys screwed it up. So yeah, that was a. Uh... Depressing game to start the weekend off with, uh, but I backup quarterbacks I think are kind of all over the place in the NFL right now. And what are you going to do about it? Yeah. So. so anyway, uh, week before Christmas here next Monday is everybody's uh, is Christmas. So hopefully uh, you guys are hopefully you bought all your gifts. I have not bought bought anywhere near all my gifts, so I'm still behind the eight ball on that. But they're all in transit on the way here. So, and uh, so you don't do any like in person, like go out and get into the hustle and bustle and get into the stores or anything like that. I did. The wife had some requests, so she requested some of her gifts, so that made it easy. And I just kind of went and did it. I, I have gone around and like definitely done the the brick and mortar store shopping stuff. He definitely, the, my son definitely is getting a bunch of stuff from different stores. So. But yeah, it, this year was a little easier and and we're not buying gifts for any of the adults, at least within the immediate family. It's all for the kids. So that yeah. makes it much simpler. Yeah, well. we, we made that change a while ago, but buying for teenagers is harder than buying for kids, too. So there's <laughs> always that. So but anyway, uh, it's a week before Christmas. Actually, we're going the next two Mondays are going to be on Christmas. And on New Year's. So ahead of time, we're just going to let you know we are not going to be doing a Marketing Mondays on Christmas Day or New Year's Day. Uh, hopefully, you're going to be spending that time with your family, with people that you love, and you don't want to listen to two guys talk about marketing. So we will come back strong on January 8th, but we will be taking the next two Mondays off. So, yes. So a very early Happy New Year to everybody as well. Uh, and so we discussed some things at the end of last week's show, kind of our direction of what we want to do with the show. And so we're going to kind of, my thought, and as I mentioned, we should have mentioned this beforehand, at least I was going to bring it up to you, of kind of how we're going to, to evolve the show a little bit. We'll definitely still take questions as they come in, yeah. but we were both were thinking kind of picking a topic and try to have a longer form discussion on it so that if you do have some more detailed questions in to what we're speaking about, then that way we can kind of dive into those and, and, and go from there. So this first iteration of this, my thought was with it being the end of the year, we're going to kind of have a look back, look forward and kind of maybe touch on a couple other topics. Um, so one of the things I played around with today was Bard and kind of wanted to see some of the the ideas that one, the AI was going to kind of spit out at me. And it's kind of gone over some of the things that we've mentioned over the last couple of weeks as far as what were some of the trends that, I, that you noticed, Patrick, over the last year that kind of popped up. And obviously, I, I think one of the first ones we'll mention is probably AI. But as far as that, what were some other trends? And then I can kind of give you the AI response. So I'm assuming you're asking specifically about digital marketing. Yes, some marketing products. trends within sure. 2023. I apologize. <laughs> I feel like that um, there's been a definite change in social media targeting and how you're doing that and how you're able to target people, which is required being a little bit more tactical with regard to how to reach people. Uh, there's a big change with regard to some of the 
things that Facebook or Meta took off the plate with regard to targeting and included with, with regard to targeting which has made it a little bit more difficult uh, and actually in some cases very difficult with regard to it, you know, spending your money as accurately as you can. The net result of that is it's costing more money to get the same results now that you used to get before. And some of that money, in my opinion, and I don't make the rules up at Facebook, but some of that money, in my opinion, is just flushed down the toilet because you're reaching people that have nothing to do with your business but there's currently no way to get around that within the meta uh, detailed targeting mechanism. So um, the net result of that is because some of your money is going to reach people that aren't relevant, you're going to spend more money to get the same results. I also feel like on uh, Google with regard to AdWords, there's been some adjustments there. They hit the ground running about a year ago, really, with an uh, ad type thing that was called Performance Max. And it was getting some really good results early. And that is sort of toward, towards the end of the year trended out to where we're finding that the results it's getting are not really great results. So even though the numbers look great, it's not really uh, it's not really you know, resulting in the type of actual business on the on the ground that we'd like to see. So I feel like one of the trends I've seen is that um, for a variety of reasons, it's costing more money, not with us per se, but with the ad platforms, it's costing more money to get the same results as that you used to be able to get for a variety, you know, not one specific reason, but for a variety of reasons. So that would be one of the trends that I think that I, I've seen. The other trend that I think that I've I've seen also is the you know the benefit of from an seo perspective and a localized seo perspective to begin to generate more uh for lack of a better term specific bespoke content optimizing images doing some of the things we've been doing for the last half of 2023 i really think there's a you're getting rewarded on the platforms if you're continually adding new you know content that's actually very optimized for you particularly and not as generic uh so there's a little bit of a change there i feel like that with all the noise on social media these days i think you really have to do some things to really stand out i think the way you used to just be able to put an ad out there and people were to respond, I think now you're going to have to get a little bit more crafty with regard to your creative, with regard to your copy and ways that you do that to grab people's attention. Because even if you put the ad in front of people with the proper targeting, it doesn't mean people are going to pay attention to it, click on it, whatever. I think the level of creative, the level of copy has increased and improved. So now to stand out, you have to, you know, do something that's going to take your content or your creative a little bit to the next level. So I don't know if those those are three trends I would say that I'm seeing and uh you know higher level, more unique content and the fact that you just have to if you're going to rely on paid advertising, get comfortable with the fact that, you know, it's just going to probably cost you a little bit more to get the same results that you were getting last year or the year before. Just the reality. No, that makes sense. I was listening to off the last topic you mentioned, especially going through social, you definitely see so many more ads, whether it's on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, it's just, you're kind of getting bombarded with them. But I think one more, like you said, more people are trying to do different things and it makes it harder, <clears throat> like you mentioned in your first point, because of the algorithm. And I think one, we don't have control of the algorithm of where to stick these no. things in. And so whether you're on TikTok, I'm on TikTok a lot more recently, and it's every fourth or fifth swipe up is another ad. It might not, it might even be more than that, honestly. Yeah. And so, like you said, it's a lot harder. Like I don't, I don't even realize that some things are ads just because all of a sudden I'll see like a little tag to their TikTok shop or whatever it might be. So it definitely is much trickier to get that that thumb pause to get people to kind of engage in the content. And one, if you actually have something to 
link to whether it's your shop or to get a message to try to get a lead it's definitely much harder it's not just hey i'm going to put this up and this is going to work and get me more leads it's no you actually have to put a little bit more into that creative in order to keep somebody seeing your post because otherwise it just kind of melts into what everybody else is kind of posting which i'll give you an example too like one of the things i've been doing recently on meta when i'm running ads is i have the ability to even if I'm running a single piece of creative, a single picture or something like that, I have the ability now in the back end of Meta to add like four different versions of the copy. And I'm starting to do that more to just be like, I want to like, you know, throw different options out of people. Something may grab people's attention, something may not. So I'm even trying to expand what we're doing with regard to the copy to say, hey, maybe maybe i think something's going to work really well and it's not so i'm trying to load it up and that's where i think ai can really help benefit where you can come up with four or five six versions of essentially the same type of copy that's saying a similar thing but i don't know which one of those is going to resonate the best so now on the back end of meta i'm oftentimes running all five versions of that copy and letting letting the people determine which one's working and the way the meta algorithm will work is the one that people respond are responding to they'll start showing that one more often so yeah and just within the uh, past year i think a lot of people are discovering other apps that they're using to integrate whether you're making reels or making tiktoks through say like a cap cut app where you're adding in subtitles and different things to kind of try to stand out one of the things that's come back around with a lot of these different platforms, <clears throat> excuse me, is that they want you to do that within their own app. Yeah. So that's something that I've definitely have been trying to, to navigate is if I'm going to do subtitles, I'm using the subtitles that are within each app and they all look different and they don't have the same. What's the you can't customize them the same way that you could within like a cap cut or a video leap type of an app. And it's the same thing with music. You can embed music into a video and then like, all right, I'm going to take this and I'm going to post this on Instagram or on TikTok. when that almost is like a negative impact on your post because they want you to use the audio tracks that are within their own platform. Yeah. So it's definitely been this thing where at the beginning of the year, it's like, yeah, let me add in all these things and I'm going to jump out. And then the platform has kind of evolved and we're like, no, nope, we're going to make you use it within what we're doing. And so that kind of makes it much trickier to kind of figure out. And like we've said before, you have to evolve. You got to try different things and kind of see what's working because the, the social media platforms are trying to stay ahead and trying to keep you within their rules so that you're trying yeah. they, you can't game the system within them by running the same thing across each yeah. one. It's like, no, you need to individually post this on LinkedIn, this here on TikTok, this here on Instagram. And it's tricky and it takes a lot of work to kind of do. But if you can kind of watch how the trends are doing and, and listen to the different people that are online, hopefully us included, that there are different ways that you can kind of go through and manage this. There's even, I mean, if you, I think we've mentioned it in a previous episode, but if, you, if you've been posting Instagram reels, but you haven't been using a music track because you're like, I'm speaking in the video, whatever the case may be. I, I I want that to be what people are hearing. I don't want to have a music track, but you want to hack away at the algorithm by using a music track. You can select a music track that's popular. And when you go to the next step, you can click on the audio thing and it'll allow you to lower the volume of the music track to zero and, and keep the volume of your audio track up so that essentially you're still getting the benefit from the standpoint that that uh, that music track is attached to your thing, but nobody's actually hearing that music track. And that's one of those things, like a lot of people are doing TikToks where they're talking. So they're like, man, I really, I know there's an extra little shot in the arm from using a music track, but my whole TikTok is based on me talking to the screen or me describing something. So how can I do it? And the way you do it is select an audio track and then lower the volume of that audio track completely out. That way you have it there for the algorithm side of it, but it's still not messing up your uh, your reel. No, you absolutely. With TikTok too, you can kind of go up. So you can do your your uh, your voice volume at like 175%. 
and I usually bring like the audio track down to like two or three. So you can still kind of hear it in the background. Another trick to that too is also writing out keywords and then pulling it down below your screen. So essentially, I, like if I was to type something up here and it's where my finger's at, and then you drag it down below. And obviously if you're looking at this screen, you can't see it, but it still is embedded within that post. Yep. And then you're hopefully gaining the traction from those different keywords that are attached as like, whether it's a subtitle or a tag on your video, it's the, the algorithm still sees it, even though the people won't see it. So it's f figuring out and finding different little tricks to kind of, like I said, game the system within each app it is one of those ways that hopefully people can, can realize. And it's been tricky over this last year because everything kind of keeps changing and evolving. Well, and I think that they, you know, here's the thing I think you have to think about with regard to these things. I mentioned earlier that you have to do more unique content and things like that. I think what's happening, you're seeing these platforms put things in place, hurdles in place, if you will, to benefit you if you take the time to do things individually. Like you said, you may have to tweak a little bit what you do on LinkedIn, a little bit what you do on Instagram, a little bit instead of just saying, man, I'm just blasting it all out there. And I feel like more now more than ever, you really have to have a unique strategy for each platform. You can't just, you know, blast it out there. Some people have a situation where they can post something on their website and it automatically goes to their social media platforms. But unless you have a way to customize that for that particular program, you're probably not getting as good of traction as you can. And I think that these platforms really want you to engage in the platform, as you mentioned, with their own AI and different things. Like they want you to engage on their particular platform. And the way you're going to get the best traction is by actually being involved on that particular platform and then moving to the next platform and being involved in that particular platform. The, the day of basically one size fits all and blasted out there are rapidly coming to a close and it takes a little bit more time and you have to be a little bit more savvy about how you do it. But I think that there's so much noise out there that if you don't do those things, you're just wasting, you're almost like just wasting your time because you're just not going to break through if you're not doing those things. Yeah. And so we've kind of covered as far as what the AI kind of spit out. Uh, one of the ones was the explosion of short form video, which we've kind of talked about through the reels and TikTok and Facebook reels, um, as well as the emphasis on the customer experience. The obviously AI is one of the ones they have here. And we'll kind of discuss that. Towards the, end. the other one that I think because of issues in the past of kind of the, the data that's been kind of given out, and we did mention this last week, was kind of the rise of privacy first marketing and how people are wanting to make sure that their data is protected. And it's no different than kind of making sure you're shopping at the right places or you're kind of protecting what you're, you're doing as far as whether it's the marketing that you're doing. And like you mentioned before earlier, some of these kind of fences that the places are putting up is maybe partly because of these privacy concerns, but it also makes it much more difficult to customize those experiences. So that was definitely of the, the four different ones that kind of popped up that were on here. And I mean, everything, I'll tell you this, like almost every time when I go in every month or so, when I'm going in and I'm building ads in the meta platform, they will give me an indication that that audience I built a couple months ago for a client needs to be modified because certain targeting criteria that were available a couple months ago when I built it are no longer available. So I actually have to go in and remove those targeting criteria because they no longer allow you to. So it's literally changing on an ongoing basis. It's like almost every time I go in anymore, I'm being told that something that was allowed last month isn't allowed anymore. And a lot of it has to do with these privacy concerns and things like that. But you know, it's just making it harder, you know, to, to reach the people that you want to reach. So you really have to think about different ways you could reach those people. And some of the things there is pathways around it. And some of the things there's, there's quite honestly not, I almost feel like some of the things that Meta has done has made it harder to get good results for a reasonable budget that you still can, but it's just harder to do now. So we'll shift gears as far as my other thought was kind of 
some of the trends and stuff that's coming uh, in 2024. And I think, and I'll kind of lead off with what these are mentioning. We kind of discussed certain phases of them. The, the number one that they had on here was the blurring of physical and digital. And so whether that's with kind of the VR, AR stuff that we've kind of top, talked about before in the past is yeah. far, when I went into VR initially and was one of the things I got excited about and I've got other friends that have kind of doing the same thing is that you can kind of create like a virtual reality shop. So whether it's you can buy something in VR that you would get uh, physically is one of those things, whether you have a bunch of t-shirt designs where say you're going into these different hubs and kind of see, Hey, this is a, a Nike hub, or this is an eye magnet hub. And we have stuff for sale, whether it's t-shirts, mugs, hats, and you can kind of see how it looks um, within. And obviously it's going to have to evolve as far as the technology of kind of seeing, well, that's how am I going to know what this is in VR versus how it's going to look in real life. Yep. But it goes along with uh, plenty of kids, whether it's Fortnite. I know one of the games I played, Pop One, it's different skins, different costumes and different things that people would pay for. And there's obviously the game that I would play. People put a lot of money into different, like just costumes and stuff. And I'm like, you're spending money on something that's in my yeah. head is almost meaningless, but it means something to them, whether they have disposable income. And so it's whether you're someone within marketing or you have a product or service that you could somehow put in the VR or the AR space. So that's something that's probably going to become much bigger, especially once Apple releases their AR headset. I think that'll kind of go from there. I know Facebook has had some waning, uh, a little bit of disappointment with their VR headset and they just re-released like their third iteration of it here within the last month or two. Um, but data ownership and transparency, uh, Evolution of influencer marketing, I can think that kind of goes with some of the stuff we mentioned before as far as not realizing that something's an ad on TikTok because so-and-so, Joe Jonas or Taylor Swift or whoever it might be, might be like trying to advertise certain things. I do I think that the interesting thing with regard to influencer marketing is, you know, I feel like that the big advertise like the influencers certainly there's products that you know if taylor swift were to promote a certain type of makeup or something certainly that would have a benefit but i actually think micro influencers are a lot more interesting space and like a particular town that you're in or if you have a small business there's probably people in your town that don't have you know five hundred thousand followers but maybe have fifteen thousand followers that are in and around your town and I feel like there's an ability to potentially engage micro influencers in a way that it could actually uh, help small businesses in a town versus thinking about the big, like yep. everybody thinks when you talk about influencers, you're talking about, you know, the Kardashians or Taylor Swift or whatever. But the reality is that, you know, a, an influencer might be somebody, you know, right in your own town that just has a lot of people that follow their advice or follow their Instagram page or things like that. So I think the micro influencer thing is interesting. I do feel like that. Um, I do feel like with AR and VR and, and things of that nature that it's still in flux, but I, I definitely feel like if anything, I think you, you have to be open to everything is changing I think AR, uh, you know, AI, all these things are coming to a head all together. And I just really feel like the way that people are advertising and the way they've been successful today is not going to be the way they're going to be successful 18 months from now, 24 months from now. I'm not, I don't have a crystal ball. I can't tell you exactly what that looks like. All I can tell you is you have to remain flexible. You have to remain willing to adapt because things are going to change. And I think with some of these things, they could change pretty substantially in the next 18 to 24 months. No, I think you bring up a great point with micro influencers. We had a question a couple of weeks ago about how do I engage my local community? And I think that's maybe one of those things is try to figure out some sort of partnership, whether it's in my head, I'm like, there's plenty of car dealerships that have bad commercials that are out there that I always see all the time. Yeah. So whether it's you maybe not are a part of the bad commercial, or I shouldn't say a bad commercial, but just 
the the ones you you see all the time and you're like okay that probably needs a little sprucing up but you know the name and here in chicago there's like bob rorman there's always different names that you kind of are synonymous with your community and so whether it is you figure out a way to to be a part of that uh commercial or part of their marketing structure or figure out some sort of way that you could do some sort of an event or different things like that with somebody who either is a a name that they see on tv or if it's something that you just see pretty popular within your community while you're looking on social i think that's a great way to try to engage the local audience especially if you have a tent shop or something where you want to get people to you i think that's going to be a, a new way to try to engage different people and that i was gonna say i think that's a, a great idea as far as how this goes and that it is well, one i think that real quick i mean I, I'm trying to think of the best ways. What's old is new again. I'll say that. Like, <laughs> I feel like the pendulum has swung a little bit. Everybody went the route of Amazon, big box stores, online. And I feel like there's a lane in in local marketing to get back to doing things where the community really sees you. The local community I'm in, there is a sporty goods store that really invests and is really like, you know, tied in to the high school sports scene, uh, all those different things. Now, every single thing they sell in that store, I'm confident that I could go online and find cheaper than I can buy it there. From lacrosse sticks to cleats to you name it, I'm confident that I could probably go online and find it. But because they're so embedded in the local high school sports scene and they're there and they're they're engaged with the community, People, that store is always busy and people are willing to spend a little bit more on cleats or spend a little bit more on a lacrosse stick because they want to support them because they see how they're supporting the community. And that was something that just a number of years ago, people were all thinking that was like something in the past. I do feel like there's a lane for people to have that tangible, you know, find a way to be relevant and engage in your community. And I feel like there's still a lane to where that really works and more so maybe today than it would have even worked a couple of years ago, because I do feel like the pendulum has swung back from, that's why I asked you when we first started talking and you were like, everything's like on the way in transit. I know this year I've personally like went out to stores and bought more than I have in the past, because I think we sort of got away from that. People were like, it's sort of, takes a little bit of the fun out of Christmas that I ordered everything online. I never even had to go for some people. Some people might be like, God bless. I don't want to go to the source. But I think for some of us, it's just I went out with my daughter the other night and it wasn't about what we actually bought. It was just being out, you know, going in and out of the stores, taking part in the whole Christmas, you know, rush and everything like that. So I feel like some of the things that people thought was like, old and passe and gone revisit those i'm not saying every one of them will work but i think some of those things are coming back into fashion again no and with you saying that like everything that i purchased was from a boutique shop it, none of it was on amazon or target besides yeah. maybe the tea that i got or that she was looking for but it was from these small boutique shops whether it was through etsy or through some other way and for me i feel like that was something i wanted to do as well as what like shop small. I didn't want to be just getting stuff on big box dealerships. It's like one, and one of the things is pretty bespoke to her. It's going to have like her, the dog's names on it and stuff. So it's something that's definitely hey, your, wife, your wife could be watching this. You're giving she, up your... Like I said, she was the one that kind of recommended this gift. Okay. Okay. Probably, she put me the right direction. So <laughs> it, it's one of those where it's very personalized and it's from a small shop. So it, I, for me, and that's one of the things here too, it's, that we were mentioning micro influencers and that was their first point was with niche communities with authentic connections will likely hold even greater sway over an audience spending decisions. And that's kind of what wow. happened to me. It's like, and it's dead on to what you were saying too. It's I wanted to have this connection with what we have, whether it's a personalized item and I can't get that through an Amazon or a target or a Walmart. It's like you have to go to some of these smaller shops and find these different things that, people like and so i think that's, an, that's the hope, an, we hope for everybody to kind of do there's an element to it of too where it's like amazon is this you know not nameless but faceless sort of 
mass corporation that's worth billions of dollars where I do feel like people are coming back to, I mean, I love the fact that it's like buying from a store and it's being like, okay, you know, that store is owned by somebody that's daughter goes to school with my son or whatever, or even if it's not that it's, it's another individual, not this big corporation. And I feel like there's a way to tap into Again, no matter what your business is, I think there's time time spent thinking. You could think about different things you could do, maybe tie into a localized influencer that maybe, you know, I know, you know, to speak a little bit about what we do, even in our local community here, uh, we do some marketing and some different things like that for the local PTO and their website and help them take care of it. And that's not anything we make money on, but I think it's one of those things that just show that our company's giving back to the local community by helping the PTO have a website that works really well and 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 uh, has that. Again, that's one of those things where you know you might look at that and be like, "How is that directly benefiting you?" Well, in my opinion, it's part of just being part of the community. And I think when you start looking at those things like that and start looking at every transaction like how does this benefit me you start looking like how can i be a better part of the community i think you'll you'll find that plenty comes back your way if you're doing that yeah that my buddy i had a call with him this week kind of mirroring that same thought and he's trying to figure out how to get his business off the ground and it's something that we've mentioned before in the past it's don't be such a sales pitch like just kind of go in and give value and kind of explain what these tools or services that you do be, without having to say, Hey, I sell this. Like it's no, this is, this is what would help you. This is the value that I think you should try. It's whether it's mine or somebody else's like, Hey, these are, this is the path that I would do if I was in your shoes. And then that way you kind of, like you mentioned before, being a thought leader of someone who's like, Hey, this person has a good idea. I kind of want to go check and see what they're up to or kind of what other new ideas that they have. Or, hey, if you're like a, like we said before, whether you have a tin shop, like explaining why paint protection has its benefits of why this is something, no matter who or what brand you're getting it from, these are the benefits that kind of come with it. Here's the window film benefits that like, if you're going to do this, whether it's going to put it on your minivan for your kids to kind of protect from, from UV protection. So it's kind of explaining what these products and services are is a good way to kind of at least just give people value and then they can turn around and if they want to purchase it versus and they feel more comfortable like you mentioned before of someone who's just reciting a script and just kind of pitching it, you kind of get that like i don't know if i really want to work with this person because they're just trying they just think of me as a number or a wallet yeah. versus someone who's hey this guy actually cared what i thought had a question or two about what i was trying to do and kind of gave me some ideas in a, in a direction and then that's hopefully obviously it's not going to be every person's not going to turn around but your chances are better that that person's either going to refer somebody because oh i thought of this or this guy reminded me about doing Dude, this type of thing i just had that our family just had that happen this weekend we were making a buying decision as a family and we met with two different companies one of them came in with the hard sell all the details just trying to close us and everything like that the other one came in and just really trying to understand what we needed and just really no hard sale or whatever. And uh, we chose the second one miles away. We were all unified and like, because the other person just came across, like we were just, we were just an invoice they were trying to gather. And the other thing I would say as well is, you know, you'd mentioned paint protection and like, you're thinking, okay, how could I do this? Like be involved. I was just thinking while you were saying it, things like, what if you went down and I guarantee you, I don't know this for a fact, but I almost guarantee you that the local uh, like fire engines for your local fire place, uh, your fire station, they have some high wear areas on those fire engines, probably not the whole front end. I'm just talking, they probably have some areas where maybe the hose comes out, whatever, that it's a high wear area. How cool would it be to say, hey. I just bought, I'm not even charging them. I went down to my, the local fire department and I applied some paint protection film to protect their fire engines and some of the high wear areas. You're doing something for the community, but guess what? You're also putting the fact that you sell paint protection in front of people in a way that you're sort of killing two birds with one stone. You're putting paint protection in front of people, but you're also doing something positive for the community 
I think if you sit and think about it, there are countless ways that you could put your product and or services in front of people without being salesy and do it in such a way that people are going to think, man, those guys are pretty cool. They did that for the fire department, you know, and, you know, you just don't you know, like too many good secrets there, Pat. Hey, <laughs> I, I'm just saying, I mean, hey, there's a lot. I mean, no, that's there's exactly a lot right. of things that you can do, but you have to sort of take yourself out of things being all about you and figure out, I think if you are, are doing some of these things and you're thinking about how can I benefit the community first, the part that comes back to you is going to take care of itself. I think you you can't think about like, okay, I'm going to go down there. I'm going to spend three hours at the fire station. I'm going to burn up $100 worth of paint protection doing a couple of these areas, whatever. Well, you know, think about it like this. If you land one job because of that, you've more than paid for the $100 in material in a couple hours of your time. And you potentially could benefit a lot more than that. Who knows how long that's going to be on there? Who knows how many of the firefighters are going to mention that story? whatever the case may be. My point is, you know, there's a lot of opportunities. And I think that think, you know, think about ways you could do some of those things instead of spending money with Google, maybe it makes more sense to spend money doing something like that. And you might get more localized ROI than spending a couple hundred dollars with Google. I'm not telling you we're in the business of helping people spend money on advertisement. But first and foremost, we're in the business of helping people make wise decisions to help them grow their business. I don't care about you sending money to Google. I don't care about you sending money to Meta. I want you to get results. And if those results mean doing other things, that's what I mean. You have to be willing to reevaluate what you're doing. I know that the next 18 to 24 months, things are going to change. I don't know right now because I don't have a crystal ball exactly what that's going to look like. But what I'm saying is, our commitment as an agency is we're always going to be trying to help our clients navigate that process. And that may mean two years from now, I'm telling people don't spend any money with Google or don't spend any money with Meta. I don't know, but our job is going to be to help people navigate where they're going to get the best results, not you know, tied into some traditional thing that's worked in the past. I think you have to be willing to evolve and you have to be willing to adapt because change is coming. I don't know what that change is, but I'm confident that it is going to change. No, absolutely. We're we're closing in on our 45 minute mark that we've kind of started new now. But as you were mentioning too, as things evolve, and that's one of the things I wanted to bring up at the end here was AI and how much the last year things have changed. And so I'm going to throw some dates at you just to kind of give you an idea of how quickly things have kind of progressed over the last year. So it was January 18th of 2023 when ChatGPT became publicly available. Yeah. So this thing, it's not even a year old, and we've already kind of yeah. seen what it's doing to the industry, which is kind of ridiculous. Um, and it wasn't until March 30th that BARD became available in English over 170 countries. So we're still looking at two things that are still in their infancy as far as what's the possibility. And we've already seen them be major disruptors within all industries, not just marketing, but the fact that how widespread things are, whether it's schooling or uh, I know my buddies in analytics and trying to figure out AI stuff. I've got friends in Germany who are doing different things with AI within the Web3 space and whether it's in I've already NFTs and stuff, which have kind of already faded and gone away. That was an arc that kind of went for two or three years. So yeah. it's like you can think a year and a half ago, NFTs were what everybody was saying you had to have. And now it's kind of like I they're all kind of down to zero. And so and it, it may come back. That's the yeah. crazy thing. We don't know what. But the fact the first year that Facebook was out, it was like a year in other than on college campuses, nobody really was playing around with Facebook or doing anything like that. Same thing with Instagram. Now, some of these things have happened faster, but the fact that AI with chat GPT barred, they're not even a year old. And when you realize how deeply they're embedded into things already, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm, it's almost scary slash interesting to say, what is it going to be like in two years? Cause it's already like, 
on the back end of website builders and things like that, there's ways that you can use AI and things like it's already prolific across our space anyway. Yeah. AI is already prolific across our space. And that's less than a year old. It's scary to think that like it's less than a year old and it's already embedded into so many things. So what's that going to look like in 24 months from now? Yeah, no, it's especially too. I think there was like an AI mini movie that was already been made. And so like now like artwork stuff is something that's done almost on the daily that I see multiple uh, AI created, whether it's TikToks or Instagram reels. And it's not just the text version. Cause like, I know with one of the things they mentioned that the, I think it was open AI mentioned that their chat GPT four is that they're expanding the ability to create like novels, like that you could type in something and say, I want 120 pages on this and it can create these massive texts. And so we obviously when it first started was like, okay, school papers and different things are going to be disrupted in that regard. But just the fact I use on a daily basis, whether it's creating a post and then kind of tweak different things or, I know for one of my clients, I usually use it for like a headline for an article. It's like, how can I kind of take this whole thing and kind of just create like a natural, like give me five different title ideas. And then I kind of pick through those and, and tweak it. So it's just the fact that it's almost a daily thing now. And I didn't have this a year ago. And it's, it's a incredible. Tool. I think what people don't understand is they want it to be and maybe someday it'll get closer to this, but a lot of people think it's like the end all. I look at it as a tool. Like oh yeah, 40 years ago, if you wanted to research something, you would go to a library and you would open up encyclopedias. There was actually this thing for anybody that's born in the last 25, 30 years where you would go to a library and there'd be a whole row of books that were alphabetical and you would research something and that's how you would get your information. You know, it's pre-internet, pre-things like that. Um, different versions. The, yeah, the encyclopedia was a tool that people used to write a research paper, to write an article, whatever the case may be. ChatGPT, BARD, are tools. What they're doing is they're allowing you, though, you know, as technology has improved, they're allowing you to be much more efficient. What used to maybe take you a week to do, you could do in an afternoon now. Now, that does not mean copy and paste what's coming out of ChatGPT or BARD, but it allows you at the tip of your fingers to have access to untold amounts of information. But then it's just a tool. I mean, you know, a wrench in the hands of somebody that doesn't know how to use it is worthless. ChatGPT <laughs> and BARD in the hands of somebody that doesn't know how to use it is worthless. Worse yet, a tool in the hands of somebody that doesn't know how to use it could actually create more problems than good. Same thing with Chat GPT and Bard. You have it's a tool, but you have to know how to use it. And right now, I feel like we're going through a phase where a lot of people are using it incorrectly, and there's going to be this little bit of tumultuous couple. I think in the next year or two, are going to be it's going to get used in the wrong way. It's going to get pulled back a little bit. But I do feel like it's a tool, like you said. I a lot of times use it just to help me brainstorm, like. Give me 10 ideas of a headline for this, and then I'll look at that, and that'll inspire me, and I'll take maybe a little bit of various ones and come up with my own headline, but it's allowed me to stimulate my creativity by doing that. Well, even for the show, I think that's the thing, too. Like, I put in a couple of different ideas, and it spit these things out. Like, I'm not sitting here reading this verbatim as our show. Like it's Tate, we use this as a tool, as kind of a guideline as far as what we could talk about. How can we bounce different things? Yeah. It kind of gave me some dates and like, it, otherwise I'm sitting there searching, like, when did this come out? When did this, when I can just ask it, it spits these information out and I can use this. It's no different than kind of when we first discovered Google, like, what is this? Or how can I, what is this illness? When you kind of notice, especially like a parent, I, I always tell my friends, I'm like, I can't imagine what my parents did back in the eighties when they didn't have the internet to kind of like look up illnesses or what is, what's this symptom kind of deal. Hey, and in some cases it's probably better off to stay off the internet. True. So, <laughs> there, I think just having that, that we have, like you mentioned, like an almost an information overload, but then how do you use that? I think is key. Just like you said before, it's kind of, we got to pick and choose these different things. And just like 
pulling this as a tool. I have all this information, but I'm not just sitting here reading this, like kind of going through the motions when, hey, it, we can take pieces of this, put this into work, and how are we, we can discuss this on here, whether it's no different than taking something for a social media post or for an article. How can you take this and, like you said, inspire yourself, gives you different ideas that maybe you didn't think of. And it's like, you, I think that's kind of where this can come into play that can be helpful is it can kind of fill in the blanks that you might not, that you kind of stumble over or can't figure out and like, oh yeah, there's this. And then you can kind of create your own kind of article or whatever it might be. Content. Yeah, no, I, I think it's, you know, again, I'll go back to the tool analogy and use a Gary V analogy, which is, I think, a really strong, you know, what's the value, you know, what's the value of the value of a basketball in my hands at NBA, you know, the same ones they use in the NBA. What's the value of that basketball in my hands? What $150 or something for an actual NBA game ball, like $150. That's the value of it in my hands because I'm not, you know, I I've played basketball a little bit, but I'm not that great of a basketball player. There's no value. What's the value of a basketball in Michael Jordan's hands? A billion dollars. You know, because it's a tool that he knows how to use. He's used to make a billion dollars. My point is, like, the tool is only going to be as valuable as your ability to use the tool. I can't use a basketball to make a billion dollars, but Michael Jordan did. Um, you know, I'm not saying you're going to use AI to make a billion dollars, but my point is, you know, understand the tools. We've talked about this hundred times. Understand the tools. Understand how to utilize them for your business. I think that you're 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 foolish if you have a tool like this at your disposal and you just choose to not use it. But I also think that you don't want to use it foolishly and use it the wrong way. But whether that's like spending some time on the internet, whatever, I think you need to educate yourself, whether it's listening to these sessions, whatever, about these tools. Because they're not going anywhere. I promise you, I, I don't know the future, but I promise you that these tools aren't going anywhere. And if anything, they're going to be more prolific. And the sooner you can start to understand them, the better it's going to be for you. The longer you wait, the more it's going to be like, you know, it's like when social media started to take off and several people for two, three, four years said, I'm not going to get involved in that because that's something for the kids or whatever. By the time the, the train was really starting to move, it was kind of hard for them to jump on because they were so far behind. You know, the train had been moving for a while. The same thing's going to happen with AI. And the sooner you can get on and start to understand it, even if it's just kind of in an understanding phase and dabbling with it a little bit, the better off you're going to be. If you put your head in the sand and think, I'm not going to use that. Three or four years from now, here's a couple predictions I'll make. One, you are going to be using it. And two, you're going to be regretting the fact that you waited three years to get involved with it. No, I think you nailed it. And it's funny, we can kind of wrap this up because this was the first conversation that me and you had on here was about AI. And now it's the last one of the year as well. So I think it's definitely going to be one that we will probably have going in the future. Um, like we, hopefully you guys enjoyed this kind of style where we just kind of cover a topic and kind of went through and we'll try to mold this as best we can. It was nice seeing everybody that's viewing. There's people have been with us through the whole show. So I thank you guys for watching. Um, and we hope that you guys got something out of this because that's what we're here to do. Like you said before, it's our, our job is to hopefully give you the best information, use us as a tool so that you can do the best things moving forward. And we're going to try to play around with some different topic, uh, different formats too. We've even talked about having a discussion about a topic and even maybe inviting some uh, resident experts in those fields, maybe even outside of our industry or things like that to the table to where maybe this is going to be a three-way conversation or a four-way conversation to where we're bringing other people with regard to that particular topic into the conversation so we can bring the most value we can yep. to you. So you might see some changes to the format, but we're doing it all in an effort to try to give you as good of information as we can. And that may mean sometimes us even going outside of our expertise and bringing in somebody that knows more about it than we do. Absolutely. You don't need to listen to us drove on all the time. So, yeah. <laughs> well, I will wish you guys a Merry Christmas uh, and happy holidays and a happy new year.
going forward and we will see you guys in 2024. Mm -hmm. Uh, personally, I want to thank you for having me on this year. This has been my new starting point. I yeah. think I'm almost 30 episodes in, so this has been a blast, um, and I can't wait to do more. Yeah, absolutely. I've really enjoyed having you on, and I enjoy everybody that tunes in, sends us questions, things like that. And uh, I'm looking forward to the changes we have in store for 2024, and I think you guys, I'm hoping that you guys really enjoy those changes as well. I'm wishing everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year again as we're taking the next two weeks off. Uh, I'm looking forward to hitting the ground running January 8th, though. So have a great holidays, everybody, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care, guys.